What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here. Things are starting to get really heated right now as the Republicans are pushing for a impeachment inquiry on President Biden, but also Kevin McCarthy, leader of the Republicans and Speaker of the House, drops an F-bomb venting to his own Republicans frustration with his own members as they're thinking about actually impeaching him from the speakership role. Yeah, take a listen here to what Matt Gates says as they threaten him to oust McCarthy as House Speaker. Uh, as he gave a fiery floor speech. Take a listen. On this very floor in January, the whole world witnessed a historic contest for House Speaker. I rise today to serve notice. Mr. Speaker, you are out of compliance with the agreement that allowed you to assume this role. The path forward for the House of Representatives is to either bring you into immediate total compliance or remove you pursuant to a motion to vacate the chair. We have had no vote on term limits or on balanced budgets as the agreement demanded and required. There's been no full release of the January 6 tapes. As you promised, there has been insufficient accountability for the Biden crime family. And instead of cutting spending to raise the debt limit, you relied on budgetary gimmicks and rescissions so that you ultimately ended up serving as the valet to underwrite Biden's debt and advance his spending agenda. Yeah, as you can see here, Republican threats to McCarthy come into sharper focus. Republicans are unhappy to his commitments about more spending cuts are coming into sharper focus, with critics signaling the opening of the impeachment inquiry into President Biden won't necessarily save him. Yeah, Representative Eli Crane, Republican from Arizona, one of the fiscal conservatives, said a push to oust McCarthy is definitely something that would be willing that he would be willing to entertain in the coming weeks. Saying, quote, I'm not thrilled with the job he's done. More importantly, neither are my voters, so I would love to see stronger leadership in the House. But he also never voted for McCarthy in the first place, so Take that with a grain of salt. Gates signaled that uh, if McCarthy does not, quote, come into compliance in the next two weeks, he could start calling for votes to recall McCarthy. Remember here that whether you're a Senate majority leader, minority leader, or House speaker, or, you know, the minority leader, or anything like that, it is a little bit of a balancing act because to pass anything, you have to have Republicans and Democrats, well, not necessarily in the House, but you can pass something in the House, but it won't pass ultimately if it doesn't pass in the Senate, okay? So ultimately, everything is a balancing act. And I think Kevin McCarthy has learned that because you're not going to pass anything if you don't get the other side aboard. And I think even if the Republicans say, kick him out and bring a new Republican Aboard, and remember that the, the Republicans did try to bring, you know, somebody else aboard with when they had the failed votes there, and they, they really didn't have another clear leader that had enough votes to really, um, you know, out outrun him at the time. I don't know Jim Jordan or or somebody who else might step up to be maybe their next leader. Um, the, the next leader for a Republican party there would still have to do the same thing. You're still not going to pass. And again, Republicans can pass something in the House with just Republican votes by a slim majority. But that's, again, you still have to pass things in the Senate with Democratic votes. So again, you still need to work with both parties. And again, you have a Democratic president. And again, things could change even with the next election. So again, it's always a balancing act. And this is something that you have to learn in Congress that you can't really strong arm the other party. You ha it's a balancing act, okay? And it's the same thing when you go to, you know, um you know, the the government shutdown, you're going to see the same thing. I get that Republicans always in this particular case are going to want their way. Democrats are going to want their way. 
Um, it, it just doesn't work that way in Congress. This is where compromise comes into play. And, you know, they, they say that the best compromise is when both sides kind of leave the table being a little bit unhappy. You guys can let me know your thoughts here on this. And actually kind of to bring up some news here with this, we're actually seeing here, maybe we will be seeing some new blood in here, but we'll be losing some middle of the road guys. Okay. Mitt Romney, who was not a far right Republican, a middle of the road Republican, says he will not be running again for Senate. Mitt Romney, who was a uh, a one term senator, but had you know um, been in a, he was a governor before, um, will not be running again. Mitt Romney was seventy six years old. You know he didn't really look that old, but nonetheless seventy six years old. And um, you got to remember that the elections are still another year away, so he would have been seventy seven years old. By the way, Trump is seventy seven years old now. And Biden is 80 years old now, add another one year to each of their age, and then another four years of presidency. You got to kind of think here, Mitt Romney, they serve six-year terms, right? So he would have been 77 um, when he would have went up for re-election. If he would have been re-elected, 77 plus six years of uh, if he would have been reelected, would have been well into his 80s. And again, it kind of, again, that's as old as Mitch McConnell or older than Mitch McConnell is right now. And you see the issues that Mitch McConnell is having. Well, again, also kind of makes you wonder, is Joe, is Joe Biden too old? Will former President Donald Trump be too old as he will be well into his 80s with a four-year term and another year next year into a presidency? It also brings up here Nancy Pelosi says she will be seeking another re-election, which is just baffling to me. Why? Why would Nancy Pelosi run again? She's 83 years old. Is she 83 years old? God, Nancy Pelosi age. She's 83 years old. And she's going to run again. Why is she running again? You know, she's already stepped down from leadership. And she did this after she had run, after she won her election last year or last two years ago, or whenever, you know, because they start two year elections there in the House. And so she won the election last time. And, you know, then she's decided, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to run for speakership again in the House. And we thought, OK, that makes sense. She's in her 80s. Let somebody else have leadership in the House. But now she says she's going to run again. Why? What's the point? What's the point? And you got to you got to see here that Nancy Pelosi net worth. <laughs> look at this, look at this net worth. And, and, you know, some of these things, you know, they're estimating this is for 2018. So again, you know, this is just the first thing that comes up here. <laughs> look at this number. One, one, four, six, six, two, five, two, one. There's so many digits here. I have to get a calculator. I, I don't because I can just kind of eyeball it there. But if there's so many digits here. You have so many digits of your net worth there. Why would you want to run again in Congress when you're worth this much money? It's $114 million, guys. This is unbelievable. And this was in 2018, her net worth. This was five years ago. My wife said there in the background, maybe her husband and her can't stand each other. So maybe she's got to get out of the house. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know. I, I wouldn't blame her or him, but, you know, remember, obviously, he got hit in the head by that intruder with the hammer. And, you know, I, honestly, I wouldn't wish that on anybody left, right, or center. But it's just like, you're in your 80s, go enjoy your $100 million. And honestly, Mitch McConnell's the same way. He's 80-some years old. The guy's been in 
Congress for 40 some years. Stop already. Just stop. Give yourself a break. Give everybody else a break. Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi, just stop already. Like, you know, and the problem with like the Senate, especially like, you know, I, I honestly, I commend Mitt Romney for not running for a, another six years. You know, I actually like the guys the most that are in the middle, the guys that are in the middle, because I feel like those are the guys that will actually they're they're willing to compromise. You know, they're not the guys that are way far right and not the guys that are way far left. Those are actually the guys that get some ground bait because the problem is like when it comes time to fix Social Security and the guys when it comes time to fix the, med the medical problems, fix Medicare, fix the budget, fix all these things, right? They're the guys that actually get something done, right? Because what happens is, you know, oh, it comes time to a uh, government shutdown, comes time to fix the budget. What happens is these Democrats, these Republicans, they dig their heels in and like somebody's got to get something done. It's it's the middle of the road, guys. It's the guys that are the realists. It's the guys that actually are like, all right, guys, somebody's got to do some work around here. We can't just have like, oh, well, the Republicans want this and the Democrats want this. Nobody's going to get anything done. It's actually these guys that are like, huh, well, let's get let's get something done. It's those people that actually like sit down and get something done. You know, believe it or not, it's actually like the Joe Manchins and the Mitt Romneys. And I get that they're not like popular people because a lot of the like Republicans hate them and the Democrats hate them because they like blame those guys. But believe it or not, those are actually the people that are like the the people that are like getting the work done. The problem is, is that they're not popular with either side because of that. Nonetheless, so Mitt Romney says he's not running for reelection, but Nancy Pelosi is. And uh, Mitch McConnell already won a six-year term, and uh, he's still got several more years left. And, uh, you know, the poor guy's having a hard time even speaking. And the second time when he um, had that problem, like sitting there not answering, he was being asked about, is he going to run for re-election? Oh, my. Oh, my Lord. It's like, really? Like, help God help us all if Mitch McConnell runs again for another six-year term. He'll be 90. Like, do we really want Mitch McConnell or Nancy Pelosi there till 90? Like, it doesn't matter which side you're on or if you're middle of the road or independent or if you're just a realist. Just think about this realistically, right? That's what a realist is, like somebody who just looks at a situation and thinks about this realistically. Do we want Nancy Pelosi or Mitch McConnell there till they're 90? Like, no, we don't. Like, they're having a hard time speaking or moving or anything. Like, this is why there was a Republican here recently who... Um, introduced a bill that said nobody should be there past 75. 75. The problem with this is that these politicians are the ones that have to pass it. They have to pass a bill to vote themselves out. And it would include presidents. And like, this is actually a great idea. The problem is, is that both of these presidential candidates would be excluded. So what do you think the likelihood of that being passed? Yeah, Biden and Trump would both be excluded. They're both over 75. In fact, they would both be over 80. Biden already is over 80. Trump will be 78 when he, uh, you know, the day of the election. And he'll be 82 if elected at the end of the presidency. And the problem is, is like, here's the problem. Like Mitch McConnell, Trump, Biden. Uh, Pelosi, Feinstein, they all, and again, I'm not going to just pick any one particular person here. They all think they're okay. They all think they're okay until they're not. This is the problem. They all say, I'm fine. It's not me. I'm with it. I'm okay until they're not. And this is why the bill that says if you're older, older than 75, 
you shouldn't be there in Congress. Go retire with your tens of millions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars that they all seem to get from Congress, right? Somehow, some way, right? Even though their salaries is only a hundred and some, two hundred and some thousand, they all walk away with fifty or a hundred million. How do you think that happens, right? So they all walk away with fifty or a hundred million dollars and um go sail off into the sunset somewhere. Go enjoy it. Don't keep working when you're 85 or 90 years old in Congress. There's no point. We need some younger people in there that are actually like going to be able to say a sentence. <laughs> they're actually like alive. My wife says, you know, they're not like the crypt keeper being rolled in. It, you know, it's just like, it, it's just, it's just ridiculous, right? And the same thing with Supreme Court judges. They need to have term limits too. And the problem is, is that nobody, how do we vote them out? We can't even vote them out. If you're not happy with the Supreme Court justice, can you vote them out? No, you can't even vote them out. You can't even vote them in. Like, that's a major problem. We are, If you're unhappy with the Supreme Court justice, left, right, center, you can't do anything about it. Something's got to change. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. And I'll keep letting you guys know what's going on here on a daily basis. If you haven't yet, subscribe down below, click the bell icon, and share these videos. And uh, we'll see. Click here to see this is going to change the war, or this is happening in less than 24 hours. Click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.